Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, babies in their diapers, welcome to the Tiberia Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! That's me, Tiberius! Today we're going to talk about some very awesome stuff. We have a role-playing video game, a book about a rolling rat, and we have a totally awesome guest. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Curtis McKinnon! Curtis is an MC, writer, host, poetry slam winner, and an independent artist that just released a new song. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That was a wonderful introduction. I can't believe I'm on the Tiberius show my first time. Thank you so much for having me, man. Well, you're welcome. And today, we're going to start off with the video game of the week, and this is going to be Medieval. And now it's time for the video game of the week. Today's video game is Nightfall RPG. So this is a game on the Roblox platform. And this was made by Forge Studios. Because it is on Roblox, you're able to play it on PC, Mac, Xbox, and even your cell phone. And it is free! This is the only game from Forge Studios. And now this game is not for the fan of heart. Because you will die over and over and over and over and over and over again. So I enter the game and boy, does this place look cool. You walk around and see a lot of buildings and trees and all that stuff. But well, you can defeat monsters by hitting them with your spear too, which is your starter weapon. Then you can level up and go to the skills place and then you can upgrade a thing or two by pressing the plus button. Then you can mine ores once you get a pickaxe, and also you can chop down trees with an axe once you get it. Then you can move on to the better monsters and get better swords. As you grow, you can get better armor and weapons. My dad played a lot and got to the Volcano Island. Well, I wish it would allow me to level up faster, but my dad said he will show me soon. But for now, I have to earn it slowly. Well, I give Nightfall RPG. 7 out of 10 stars because it was hard to find stuff to do. Over 40 years, Playhouse Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact Playhouse Central Florida at 407 898 2483 or visit them online at playhousecfl.org. The Tiberia Show would like to thank one of their dedicated sponsors, Custom Designs Orlando. These guys are on Mills Avenue and do all sorts of stuff, ranging from photo ID badges, engraved signs, custom braille ADA signs, vinyl lettering to trophies and awards. The cool part about Custom Designs is they can ship products all over the United States. You can reach them at 407-898-0373 and tell them that Tiberius sent you. And now it's time for the book of the week, Mystery of the Roaring Rat. All right. Mm Mm-hmm. And this book is written by Geronimo Stilton. We'll read to the back of the book. In fact, Curtis, do you want to do the honors? Absolutely. (laughs) Let me go ahead and take a look at that. All right. Who is destroying copies of the Rodents Gazette? Someone has it in for Geronimo, and the newspaper is losing money fast. Geronimo's tail is on the line as he enters a high-stakes TV contest to win back enough money to save his business. This sounds incredible. Sounds very present day. This is a great choice, Iberius. Mm-hmm. Well, it is, really. And, well, this is an air book, and it's worth one whole point. It's graded for third grade, but fourth mod. Okay. Well, this is a great book about a mouse named Geronimo Stilton. What is really cool is that the main character has the same name as the author. But I'm pretty sure he is not really a mouse. Hmm. Very convenient. Mm Mm-hmm. So Geronimo gets up in the morning and goes to get his, you know, usual coffee at the cafe. Then he went to the newsstand to get a copy of his newspaper. If you remember Geronimo, he runs the Rodents Gazette. But there was no copies of the Rodents Gazette there. Instead, there was a new newspaper called the Daily Rat. Geronimo was not happy. I wouldn't be either. Mm-hmm. 
and he goes to work and, uh, and was worried about losing money for the company. So he gets on a TV game show to raise money to save his company. He has to answer all of these questions that are so hard, and if he didn't get the correct, he will lose his tail. But if he did get them correct, he would get a million dollars. Hey, you know, it's all or nothing these days, so yeah. you got to go for it. Yeah. Well, all the time, he is researching who runs this competing newspaper, and all of a sudden, he finds out the Daily Rat is run by none other than... Well, you know, I can't ruin the story for you. Aww, come on. Yeah, you have to go read the book. Ah, it was getting good. It was getting good. It was. That's why I did it. Man. (laughs) I give The Mystery of the Roaring Rat 10 10 stars because I really liked how things worked after the mystery was solved and they found common ground to work together. That's always good. This is very, I'm going to have to pick this book up. I'm going to have to pick this book up and read it myself. See, David Smith, law.com. You can call him at 407-801-2667. Wait, you are not Chuck. My dad can help when people get hurt. He loves to help. If you are ever injured at work or in a car accident, you should call my friend Chuck. You can call him at 407-801-2667. That website again is cwsmithwall.com. Offices, Orlando. Does it actually have that much W's? <laughs> Midstate Fire has been providing top quality fire equipment services for three generations to the Central Florida area. Don't wait for an emergency to repair. Call Midstate Fire today at 407 246 8855. Get your fire extinguishers and emergency lighting for both your home and businesses by visiting www.midstatefire.com. That number again is 407 246 8855. Now it's time for the interview of an interesting person. This is going to be so much fun. Today we have the one, the only, the amazing Curtis McKinnon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. <laughs> Curtis is an MC, writer, host, poetry slam winner, independent artist, and just released a new song. Man, you guys make me sound like I'm really busy, like I do a lot of things, you know? I do a little. I do a little. <laughs> it's because you send us your bio. <laughs> So first off, how are you enjoying being on the show? I'm having a great time, man. I'm having a great time. I love learning about the video game of the week, the book of the week, you know, some things. You're giving me some more things to do in my in my downtime while I'm while I'm creating and, and doing different things, man. So I love it. Okay, so I have to ask. You okay. do so many different things. You're a writer, host, and independent artist. Which one do you like the best? That's tough. What I like the best, I have to say... Hmm. I have to say hosting is probably one of my top because I love being in front of an audience. Wow. Yeah. So what exactly is an independent artist? Well, an independent artist is somebody that's not signed by a record label. They produce things themselves. They write things themselves and they self-publish. So it's somebody that does everything for themselves. There's no major corporation that's backing them. And that's what I am. Wow. Well, that's really, really cool. What was the best part about being an independent artist? All right, so the best part about being an independent artist is having the creative control uh, to write and create um, in the way that I see fit. Uh, There's nobody, you know, trying to tell me what kind of song to do or how to deliver this in a particular way. I get creative control for what I put out. And, um, you know, my integrity is intact 100%. So that's the best part about being an independent artist. I get to create a freedom to do anything that I want to do with my artistry and my artist name, and that's what makes it so great. Wow. So your bio says that you slam poetry. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me more about that? <laughs> well, I don't slam poetry. I do poetry slams, so it's a little bit different. You know, poetry slams are basically competitions that uh, poets get into, and they see, you know, they have the crowd, random people judge, um, and then they have a score of 0 to 10. And your goal is to get as close to 10 as possible to convince the audience and uh, your fellow peers that it deserves a 10. And then whoever wins at the end is, you know, is the, is the, is the winner. And I I've had the opportunity to win, you know, quite a few, um, quite a few in my day. <laughs> <laughs> so you won a few awards for Poetry Slam, like like you just said. Well, which are you most proud of? I would say the French Festival in 2012. 
as well as the Fridge Festival in 2018. Because uh, I didn't expect to come back and, and win six years later. It was very impromptu, even from when I was asked to be a part of it, to winning that. So that was really, really, really cool. Mm-hmm. So my dad said that you have a new song coming out. Can you tell me about it? Absolutely. Uh, The song is called Ode to Black Women, and it's basically a song about uplifting the women in my community and, uh, you know, who have been mistreated or mishandled uh, by... You know, people all over the world. So it's it's my job in the song. I shed light on some of those things. And then I also make sure I take time to uplift and empower them so that they know that someone is um, out there speaking on their behalf and making them feel good. And, you know, giving them some, some more self-esteem and confidence to know that, you know, somebody has their back and they are supported. Mm-hmm. So what was the song important for you to make? Oh, well, it was important for me to make because I've always been um, not a silent advocate, but I've always I've never liked seeing people being mistreated. And I felt like this happened more often than not. And so it was important for me as a man to make a stand for women because, you know, not just because we all come from women, but we're all human beings. And so when I see somebody that looks like my sister or my mother or somebody that's just anyone that's being mistreated it it bothers me especially when they haven't been provoked or done anything to deserve that type of treatment so it's um it was important for me to make a stand for something like that well does it take a lot of training to be able to do this it does take a lot of practice you don't need a lot of training to have a heart to want to speak out for people or to help people but in terms of creativity you just need a little bit of practice and the heart to do it and of course you'll you'll eventually get there But what is the hardest part about being an independent artist? It's like the pros and cons. So the good thing about being an independent artist can sometimes also be the not-so-great thing about being an independent artist because when you need funding, when you want to do really creative music videos or you want to you know, pay for production and sound, those are things that have to come from out of your own pocket or if you're lucky enough, you have fan support and they can help you to you know, to promote your dreams. Um, so the hardest part would probably be the funding and um, the fact that you have to do most things on your own. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, what is the most rewarding part about your job? The most rewarding part is definitely having the fans um, appreciate and then have uh, have the things that you create it resonate with them. And then the fact that they say, you know, you were speaking for me or like, thank you so much for making this. Or, you know, just um, I'm so grateful that uh, this is the type of content that you make. And it, it's really rewarding because it's it's me being true to myself. And it's almost like they are... What's the word I'm looking for? It's almost like, they're, yes, it's like they're a part of me. They're showing love to a part of me of who I am. So it's not like a job. It's it's an extension of me. So that's 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 got to be the most rewarding part. Okay. So your bio says that you hosted a bunch of events. Have you interviewed a, like or hosted a famous people? Not yet, but I would love to. I have um, hosted open mics. I've done weddings um i've done a um i've done a a benefits awareness for multiple myeloma cancer and things like that but i haven't interviewed anybody famous yet soon 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 Mm -hmm. so what is the craziest thing that has happened while you were doing your passion it might be from uh winning that slam in uh in 2018 because i just wasn't expecting it at all it was very last minute and um (laughs) <laughs> I came back and I did some, a couple of old things and maybe one new thing. And then me winning that, and, and that was just, it was mind-blowing for it's me. It was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. It was crazy. It I couldn't crazy. believe it. I couldn't believe yeah. it. <laughs> so my dad says that you are a good singer. Can you throw me some bars? Mm, let's see. I can sing like, no. <laughs> I won't I won't make the audience's ears bleed. Um but I'll throw I'll throw you some bars. I'll throw you some bars. Uh here we go. Um Enthusiasm truly happens when not one but two be passionate about the same things. Connection integrating. Similar train of thoughts of the Underground Railroad to Noah's Ark. A fresh start till death do us part. I'm focused on the spiritual, the physical. It dwindles like a moth to a flame. I just want to be kindled. We make things complicated when they were meant to be simple. Sometimes we should use force. Most times we should be gentle. Sometimes I want to fly into the eye of the sky. Land on a silver moon. Converse with the most high. Avoid the noise pollution, confusion, and intrusion. Where if I cease to be alive, I continue to revive. This flow is abstract, if you can imagine that, continues to fluctuate and oscillate like NASDAQ. 
And that's that. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Thank you. I can't think of that. <laughs> I can't think that fast. <laughs> Hey, you know, it's again, it's practice. It's yeah. practice and, uh, and repetition. Practice makes progress. Yeah, exactly. Just like how you do this show all the time. Somebody might not be able to do what you do, but yeah. you, you do it. See, and mm-hmm. when you're at the start of a new show, mm-hmm. you start okay. Mm-hmm. And then while you're elevating over, you know, for me, it's been two years. So mm-hmm. I've elevated like two years and a half. Right. And now I'm actually getting pretty good at it. Yeah. Because you're memorizing. Mm-hmm. You have that muscle memory. Right, exactly. And you're exactly. remembering some of the words. So so you, so you seriously, you can just, like, remember, like, all of the questions. And right. just sincerely just look at the guest the whole entire Boom. thing. Boom. And that's it. Boom. Well, what is your greatest achievement in life? Because you have so many jobs. <laughs> <laughs> My greatest achievement in life... It's probably not having to do with a uh, professionally. It's probably being married. It's probably being married. I mean, when I got married in 2018, um, wow. that was my that was my greatest achievement. Uh, you know, finding somebody that that loves me and um, you know, and that loves you God. Love is, them? Yeah, and I love them absolutely. You better believe it. You can't be in a marriage if you don't love that person back. Well, you can, but it just be a very wild yeah, adventure that you could probably write a book a about. Lot. A little bit weird. A little bit weird. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Who will motivate or inspire you the most in following your dreams? That's a phenomenal question. Um, I was motivated and inspired by Martin Luther King, Tupac Shakur, Mm -hmm. my friends. Um, They've... I have a very great circle of friends. Um, they don't live close to me. A lot of them don't live close to me, but they have pursued their dreams, and it inspired me to know that I could do the same because it, they say, hey, they had little to no help when they did it, and I just looked at myself and said, well, they can do that. Um, I should be able to do it too. And, you know, I just tapped into myself, and and uh, and I was able to accomplish some, some pretty awesome things. So, yeah. So... What is the coolest thing that you have ever done? Wow, the coolest thing I've ever done for sure has definitely been shooting the music video, my first music video for the the song "Ode to Black Women," which is streaming on all platforms right now. Shameless plug, uh, <laughs> but that was the that was the coolest thing that I've done. It was um, me taking a chance on myself, and I uh, had my my family around me. My family was in the video, my wife, uh, my close friends, and um, that was the that was just the the coolest thing. That was the mm-hmm. coolest thing. So what if I should give my listeners if they wanted to grow up and be an independent artist? I would say be true to yourself. Um, always be true to yourself. That's where you're going to find the key. That's where you're going to find the um, the magic in that because you're unique and a one of one. So be true to you and the art will flow. And as long as you're staying true to that content and the things that you're creating, all the things will follow. If you could go back 10 years and tell yourself something, what would it be? Ooh, it would probably be don't care so much about what other people think. Mm-hmm. That that would be the main thing. I would save myself a lot of time, a lot of headache, and get a lot more accomplished if I didn't worry so much about what someone thought about what I was doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, what did you want to be when you grew up? Boop. Did you always want to be an independent artist? Um, actually, no. Uh, when I was a kid, I wanted to... <laughs> a part of me wanted to play football. And then there was another part of me that um, wanted to make video games. Because um, I loved video games. I still love video games. I don't have as much time to play them. Uh, but um, I started... I wanted to do that. I thought I would uh, make different types of Kool-Aid. Like being like a chemist or something like that. So I wanted to do a ton of different things before I landed on being an artist well if you could do any other job that you are not already doing what would it be hmm you know honestly i would say comedian i don't i don't think that i'm super duper funny but i love making people laugh and i think if i took some time i would be able to i could be 
I could be pretty good at it. So if that would that would be that would be one. I love making people laugh. It brings people together. It's just more a part of who I am. You know, bringing people together and and having people feel good once I uh once I leave the room, when I enter the room, and when I leave, they feel better than uh than than when before I came in. <laughs> So what was the biggest mistake you ever made, and how did it change you as a person? The biggest mistake I've made, probably lying, but it was also one of the best things that happened uh, to me in a weird way. Because I lied about my age. I used to always lie about my age uh, because I didn't feel like... Um, I was uh, respected or people looked at me the same. So I lied about my age to, you know... To, to, to get a little bit of respect or to have some self-esteem. And then, you know, I got arrested. and um, But it wasn't just because I lied. They said that. But um, <laughs> I got arrested while my friends didn't. And even though we were all together. Um, but that experience showed me the reality of what it was like for people uh, like me at that time and even the present day. And it, it, and it fueled some of my passion to write, which is actually I wrote my first song after, shortly after that experience when I was 15. I lied and said I was 16. So just by one year, I didn't think I was doing anything com- completely horrible. But, you know, it turned into an experience that ended up actually shaping um, shaping my life a little bit. So, um, so yeah. Mm-hmm. So, when you're not working as an independent artist or hosting, what do you do for fun? Well, I listen to one or two podcasts. Like, um, you know, some. actually, I listen to some wrestling podcasts. I used to love wrestling. I don't watch it like that anymore, but I used to love, love, love wrestling. So, I listen to a podcast about that here and there if I do want to keep up. I watch movies on Netflix and Hulu, um, sometimes Disney+. Plus. And, um, yeah, and in my downtime, I definitely play a little bit of video games. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, is there anything I should think my listeners should know about you? Um, I love comic book video, uh, comic book shows and movies, um, shows about geniuses. One of my favorite shows is Prison Break. I really love, like, um, uh, anime, too. Um, but I do like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. I like... Death Note, I like Hunter Hunter. Hunter Hunter is one of my my all time favorite. And um, let's see, Dragon Ball Super, of course, Dragon Ball and Naruto. So I love anime. I'm still a kid at heart, and um, you know I like to say that way. It helps mm-hmm. it helps it helps keep me you know in the know. <laughs> well, do you have a website or Facebook for my listeners to want to follow you? Absolutely. Um, on social media, you can follow me at Mr. McKinnon on Facebook, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Twitter, on Instagram and uh, Facebook. It's Mr. McKinnon, M C K I N N O N, and then on Twitter and TikTok, it's M I S T E R M C K I N N O N. So you can follow me on all social media flat platforms and on my YouTube. Of course, please follow me on YouTube so I can upload really cool content. You guys will be the first ones to see it. Okay, so what is that one question that you think I forgot to ask you? Hmm, I don't know. I think you did. Uh, I think you did pretty good. I think you did pretty good. I don't know if there's a, another one. I think we're. I think we covered all the all the bases. Hmm. Well, thank you, Curtis, for being my special guest. Can you stick around for math corners? Sure, absolutely. I used to love math when I was a kid. Then I got not so good at it, but I'm ready to. I'm ready to get right back at it. <laughs> The Tribeo Show would like to thank Boggy Creek Air Road Adventures for being one of our sponsors. I got to go on an air belt and saw a real gator. I even got to go to the gem mine and mine for some gems. We ate a steak dinner at the restaurant and even got some gator rights. If you want to have a blast with the entire family, I suggest you go to www.bcairboats.com right now to get your tickets today. The website again is bcairboats.com. Oak Ridge Gun Range is a family-oriented shooting range that has been in business for over 30 years. They specialize in basic firearm training and offer numerous services such as consignments, gun trades, gunsmithing, and concealed weapon classes. I even got my training for gun safety at Oak Ridge Gun Range. Great customer service and firearm safety is what they do best. So find out more at OakRidgeGunRange.com. Tiber 
Pierce's favorite subject, it's Math Corners! Thank you, Curtis, for helping me with Math Corners. Of course. Today, we're going to talk about graphing points. Mm -hmm. So I'm doing my IXL.com math skills, and I found graphing points. Well, this does not look like math, but it is. Hmm. And it's also a lot of fun. Okay. So you start off with a chart or a graph. This looks like two number lines. One on the bottom is called the x-axis, okay. and the one on the left is called the y-axis. Hmm. They meet on the bottom left at zero. Now, hmm. you have this graph with x and y in the number lines, so you can graph the point on the chart. Mm -hmm. Each point can be assigned a letter, so I can have point A where you can put it on the graph. But where? Well, you can define where the point is by the location on the number lines. So you, can, so you list the x-axis location first, and then second you have the y-axis location. So if you have point A on 2, 3, it would be 2 squares over to the right and 3 squares up from the bottom. Mm -hmm. It is now important that any other points on the graph have nothing to do with the others. So just because point C is also on the graph does not get in the Y of point A. Now sometimes you are, you are they give you the coordinates and you have to plot the point. So if you are told to put, put, to put K on 4, 2, then you would first look on the x-axis and, and move 4 squares to the right. And then okay. look on the y-axis and move 2 squares up. Got and it. mark your point on that location. Oh, and be sure to put a K next to the point, too. Got it. Okay. So, Curtis, do you now know all about how to do graphing points? You know, I'm not going to lie. Got a little bit lost, but I think you caught me up, so I'm, we're going to go ahead and give it my best shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, thank you, Curtis, for your help with Math Corners. And now it's time for the Heart of a Lion. As you know... We talk about the qualities of living by the heart of a lion, which stands for leadership, integrity, obedience, and nobility. This week, we're going to talk about leadership. For me, I think leadership is the act of loving what is good, having self-control, and being disciplined. The qualities of leadership are providing guidance and direction, organization, and being a positive influence on others. All of the fourth grade teachers in my school were supporting and providing materials for the other teachers in the school. They were making worksheets about the new year and getting it ready to provide to each other of their respective classes. This is being a positive influence on others as well as providing guidance and direction of making their own sheets. So Curtis, do you see or use leadership at all this week? Wow. Um, I actually have. I saw leadership in when I went on vacation. I went to go see my uh, my mother in law and their family, and I saw my brother in law be a really awesome dad uh, to his kids, to his sons. Um, you know, teaching them about respect and um, you know not interrupting people when they're talking and to you know waiting their turn and also um you know celebrating them when they did a good job and also you know just kind of uh roughing them up a little bit in uh when it came to video games and uh and sports and things like that but in a playful way so i thought that was i thought that was really cool and he i think he uh, displayed leadership really awesomely that way all of all of the heart of the lion virtues which is your favorite hmm leadership integrity obedience nobility i'm going to say integrity integrity is going to be my favorite mm -hmm. okay and we should always try and be lion strong in everything we do that's right absolutely 100 percent. and that's our show folks i want to thank the one the only the amazing curtis mckinnon for being on my show it's been so much from talking with you today, and I have one day to see you perform your music live. I can't wait, man. I can't wait. Thank you so much for having me. You guys are awesome. Um, again, just just super, super, super thank you. And uh, again, you know, you can follow me at all social media platforms, Mr. McKinnon, on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, all of that, YouTube, all of that, all of that. What from YouTube? Uh, for YouTube, it's at uh, Mr. McKinnon also. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And be sure to listen to us next week on the Tiberius Show with your host, Tiberius Boy! The Tiberius Show is not filmed in front of a live studio audience. Executive producer, Joseph Boy. Production editor, Pierre Laguerre. Green Room manager, Danny Boy. And your program host, Tiberius Boy! 
Tiberius Show is copyright 2018.